Hello Church, welcome to NCCP Church Anywhere Online and our sermon series. I am Pastor Jerry Goucher of the North Carroll Cooperative Parish and I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Would you all please pray with me? Almighty God, we just ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would open up our eyes and our ears and especially our hearts this day to the truth of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today we are in our third Sunday in Lent. And we look at the book of Isaiah chapter 55, where God is inviting with words of, of poetry that are spoken through the prophet. The prophet is speaking to the exiles that are in Babylon and probably the third or fourth generation that were taken that were actually born in Babylon. They were born in captivity. Their grandparents and their great-grandparents were the ones that were taken from, from Ju Judah and Jerusalem into captivity so many decades earlier. And so he's speaking to these exiles. And he's getting their attention. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I invite us to just take a moment to kind of close our eyes and imagine ourselves going back in time to 6th century BCE to Babylon and into the marketplace. We can hear the hucksters vying for everyone's attention, trying to get people to buy their product, whether they need it or not. Come, get your fresh lamb here. Get your blankets and linens here, best quality in town. Come get your grain. And maybe even water is a commodity. Come and buy the freshest, cleanest tasting water. And in this marketplace, it may sound a lot like going to a ball game, a baseball game, or a football game where we see the vendors in the stadium. Get your hot peanuts here. Get your hot dogs. Get your soft drinks. Get your beer. Each vendor trying to outsell the other. And we can see that it's not just Babylonians in the marketplace, but some of these exiles. And maybe some are fortunate enough to be artisans and craftsmen, and they can afford whatever they think they need. While so many others or the laborers, or the servants for others. And maybe they have very little money or no money. Those with very little money may have to wait till the end of the day to where things aren't as fresh and because that's all they can afford. There's whatever was left over that nobody else wants. Or they have to beg for just a small morsel. And so we fast forward back into our 21st century, some 26 centuries later, where life is radically different, but not much has changed in the marketplace. Small businesses, large businesses, whether they're corporate or non-corporate, 
are all vying to sell their goods to us. But they use advertisers to bombard us day in and day out, all day, all night, with ads trying to tell us or convince us what we should wear, what we should eat, what we should smell like, what kind of clothes to wear, what kind of house to buy, what kind of car to drive, how to furnish all that, and millions of other things that don't necessarily fulfill us. This world calls us to come and buy, consume, and waste our time and money on so many things that just do not fulfill. We can name so many ways we chase after the things to make us feel content, to make us feel special, to make us feel important. As we buy bigger, better, more, and yet it never, it's never enough. It never fills that emptiness we might still have inside. It fills it for a moment, but that moment is fleeting. And we find ourselves overworked and overburdened and tired and weary and weak. And maybe we feel like our shoulders are slumped over and we just stare at the ground, wondering how long, O oh Lord, it's a lot like if we were in a canoe rowing up river. We work so hard, we row and we row. Just wearing ourselves out, tiring ourselves out, trying to get somewhere. And we get tired and we have to stop rowing and the current takes us downstream only to have to get up the next day and keep rowing frantically some more. And years go by and we look around and we still are in the same place that we have been stuck in. All those possessions we have bought has not really brought us true happiness. And we are just overburdened and we are tired and we are weak. And we think we need to buy more stuff to make us happy and it never ends. We become a slave to our possessions. We become captivated to our possessions and they own us rather than us owning them. We have to replace them. We have to fix them. We have to repair them. There's maintenance and it becomes all too much. But we look at the good news today in this passage, in these first few verses we see a vast contrast in God's economy where we are all invited without price as opposed to the world's economy where everything comes at a cost. And the cost is not just money. The cost is relationships and, and peace of mind and our joy. All that is vanished and we are tired. But the good news is that God offers this amazing grace, this extravagance, this provision for spiritual nourishment. And again we read, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters and have your thirst quenched. And you that have no money, come and buy and eat. We are invited to come without price, without having money. We don't have to pay for it. It is a free gift. We come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. And why would we spend our money for that which is not bread, for those things that don't fulfill us? Labor so hard for that which doesn't satisfy us. This is an invitation to, to live an abundant life. Jesus tells his disciples and some in the crowd that he did not come to be served, but to serve others, to give life and to give life abundantly. In this season in Lent, we 
have the opportunity to turn away from all the busyness of this world and all what the world tries to dictate how we should live and move and have our being and sit at the feet of God, our King. Much like Mary sat at the feet of Jesus where she got her rest, her peace, her sense of joy, her sense of fulfillment, while Mary was busy working in the kitchen, busying herself with worldly things. Jesus said that Mary chose the better, to sit and be filled by God. God fills us not just with bodily nourishment, but spiritual nourishment. Things that we need to fulfill us and sustain us for the long journey of becoming like Christ. If we remember from week one, Jesus is in the wilderness. He's in the wilderness for 40 days as he prays, as he meditates, as he takes time to be with God. And Jesus is famished, he is hungry. And on that 40th day, the devil comes to him and says, since you are the son of God, take that stone that's on that ground, that nice round golden brown stone, and turn it into a loaf of bread. But Jesus will not use his divine power to serve himself. He rather tells, and quotes from scripture, he tells the evil one, that humanity does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But we choose to work so hard for things that don't fill us when we could sit at the feet of God and be, staying, be sustained by that spiritual nourishment to have that abundant life by learning from God. Because God tells us our ways are not God's ways, and our ways of thinking are not God's ways of thinking. We think we know what's best for us, but we really don't until we sit at the feet of God and learn from God what is absolutely necessary in life. At the feet of God, we get our peace, we get our rest, and we are sustained for the journey of growing into the likeness of Christ. And we still have plenty of time for work and we still have plenty of time for family. We just need to understand that the world will pull us away from all that, trying to tell us what we need to sustain us, what we need to be fulfilled. And most, most none of that can do that for us. But God can. If we take time for God, we have time for work, we have time for family, we have time for what is important. Let us take this opportunity in Lent to stop looking down and stop being slouched over, being tired and overburdened and overworked, striving for things that don't fill us. God invites us to stand up straight and turn back to God where God lifts us up and makes us upright once again. Research has been done that found that uh, students were asked to write down three things positive and three things ne negative about their future. And the research found that those who set up straight were, might more, were more likely to write down thoughts that were positive rather than negative as how they would be qualified for a job in the future. Those who were slumped over their desks were less likely to accept these written down feelings and were more drawn to the negative things they wrote. The students who held the upright, confident posture wrote positive traits about themselves and rated themselves more highly. And if they wrote negative traits about themselves, they rated themselves lower. So the way we hold ourselves, the way our posture is, dictates a lot about our confidence. But we have to be careful because there's a fine line between confidence and pride. Our confidence lies in what God has already done for us and not what we can do for ourselves. Let us take time 
in this season in Lent to sit at the feet of our Lord and Savior to learn how to live life and have it abundantly by seeking that spiritual nourishment that will sustain us for life. Amen? And, and may God be with you till we meet again.